The Hemodactylus frenatus, also known as your common house gecko here in the U.S., and it's found many other countries as well. This gecko is not native to America at all. It somehow found its way here to the U.S. from a different country. And surprisingly, you might find this interesting to hear, is that uh, this gecko here seems to get mistaken for a chameleon a lot for some reason. This type of gecko doesn't have the ability to change its colors to a way that a chameleon can. Normally when you find a chameleon, they have the ability to change their self in uh, vibrant colors, if you will. A gecko like this can only change its color to a light color like you see here, or when it's like uh, trying to hide or, or angry, um, they'll change their color to a darker color, but they don't have the ability to change to vibrant colors. And if you don't know what I mean by vibrant colors, I mean the pretty colors. Red, green, yellow, bluish. Some, some people actually think that these can, but they're not that type of gecko. And in fact, chameleons are a lot different than geckos are. Anyways, I'm going to show you some things that I highly recommend should you plan to want to have one of these as a pet. And trust me. If you want to keep a healthy, happy gecko, this is some stuff I'd highly recommend that you get for it. Okay, so I'm going to show you, surprisingly, my gecko is uh, actually going to be peeking on his, his, his head. I believe it's a him. I haven't really checked for sure, and I haven't really had the perfect time to do this yet, so I don't know. Um, but you can see back there, maybe its head back there um, in the back and like there's like a little hump for its eye and all um, if you're gonna be having one of these as a pet okay if you're a parent watching this video it's very really important that you stress to your kids that this type of gecko is not something that they're gonna be able to play with sadly I know I know they want to keep one to play with but unfortunately this type of gecko is not able to be played with because of the fact that you will kill it from stress um, which would not be good uh, these are this type of gecko is very skittish in fact if you ever see them out in the wild you'll see that they run away and try to hide from something that's after them that being you but anyways yes so the tank I have here is a tank that I picked up from like PetSmart here in the US. It's a pet store if you don't know what I'm talking about outside of the US. It would be about a $25 tank, at least at the time that I had purchased it from PetSmart. And uh, it came with the stuff that's in there, you know, the uh, the log, as well as the uh, mulch that's in there, and the fake plant as well. So obviously you're gonna need a tank, if not a tank like this, hopefully a a little bit bigger tank. This is, I believe, uh, a two-gallon tank. It's really nice. It fits nice on my desk, so it's like one of them nice display things should you want to have one as a pet to sit on your desk, kind of watch and stuff, which might be kind of rare because this type of gecko is a nocturnal gecko, so it probably won't come out uh, unless it's dark. So, I mean, there's not much to watch for this type of gecko because it's not going to come out when there's a lot of noise if you have screaming kids you're not it's probably not even going to want to come out at all until the lights go out this one i've only it only comes out around midnight which is good which is how it got its name midnight it's but the name i gave it because it only wants to come out from that height around midnight so on the back there of the glass you can see this black thing on there that is actually a heat pad should it want to come out and uh, lay on the glass. It has like a nice heat pad. It's not super hot where it'll burn their insides. And I still have another heat pad um, underneath the tank as well. So it kind of brings up heat um, up underneath from the bottom of the tank too. So it's nicely, I want to say it's nicely warm for it because I, I keep it in an in a extremely cold room because I have computers that heats up my room. So unfortunately I have to have an AC running and it gets pretty cold in here. So, 
I'm going to show you some things that you should think about getting to keep this type of gecko happy. And by the way, you don't want to house more than one of the same gender in the tank together because they will fight. So don't don't mix two two of these together. Anyways, this is where where it would hide at. You gotta have something for it to hide in, like a log or something that it can hide in. Because, like I said, they're really they're really scared and stuff. So it requires for the nice have like a little nice spot to hide from. That right there is my uh, my lamp that I have. I highly recommend that you get like a. Um, it's it's called a moonlight lamp, is what it is. It's basically like a really, uh, kind of like almost call it like a. Um, one of them black lights, but it's not. Don't get a black light, but it's it's one of those types of dark color lights and stuff. It helps because being that they're nocturnal, they will hurt their eyes having a bright light. This here we're looking at is is crickets, and um, for for this type of gecko, I f I strongly feel that. Um, it's really probably the only thing that it'll need to eat. A lot of people they won't they won't feel that it's worth going out and buying crickets for their gecko. They'll just go out and find something around the house. Should you want to keep crickets to feed it, you're gonna need cricket food. Being how farm raised crickets, they don't have the nutrients that your gecko is gonna need. So you're gonna to need to have to gut fill these uh, crickets that you buy because the ones you buy in the store they unfortunately don't have the vitamins that this gecko that you're going to have as a pet needs to be able to have the vitamins that it needs you know the wild crickets that you find they already have the nutrients that wild critters that want to eat those crickets or bugs already have in their body so when they digest them they already have their vitamins and calcium and stuff to help their bones and also to keep them healthy too all right so this uh food for the crickets that i have is runs about like i think like five dollars or so if you can find it you finally find something else for the crickets to eat and all but it needs to be something that has vitamins for your reptile your your gecko, if you will. It's a very um, mushy-like jello. I want to call it like a jello almost is what it's like. It's It's got a, a really funky smell to it as well, but this will help give your crickets that you're feeding. You just drop it in, their, in the cricket tank and they'll eat it. And basically it contains all the uh, vitamins and whatnot that your your common house gecko needs to, to stay healthy you know to keep the bones going strong and as well as to keep it healthy so that its skin is good it's 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 its body is getting the needed vitamins that it needs but this here is the um food that i use for my uh my crickets that i buy from the pet store and stuff and um you're also going to need a water bottle as well i'm going to go ahead and show you here a water bottle it doesn't matter what size water bottle just take in mind I know this seems like a lot of stuff, but trust me, if you want to keep them alive and happy and healthy, sadly this is what it requires. So, water. Unfortunately, don't give your, don't feed your reptiles, okay, including your common house gecko, tap water, okay? It has nothing to do with conspiracies, it's just that there is stuff in our water being the uh, stuff they use to clean our water with the chlorine and stuff is not good for is not good for your reptiles so uh, unfortunately you're going to want to use bottled water and uh, this is the type of water I use sometimes I waste half my water so it comes in handy to have these extra bottles around that I could just fill the water bottle up with and and it has that water. By the way, the reason why you need a, a, a spray for is because you need to spray their tank down, because this type of a uh, gecko, they're not they're not going to drink out of a water bowl. It may be rare that they might, but you're going to need to be able to spray their tank down to keep the the temperature in there nice and and humid for it to be able to shed and stuff. So if you keep a dry tank, it's not going to help it shed. 
as well as it's not going to be able to drink any water. So you will need to go in there once uh, once in a once a day or once every other day and spray it down, depending on how dry it is. And then here is the crickets. I keep them in this little carrying container that I keep them in. Got some moss in there for them to hide under, as well as they might actually eat this moss as well. So it's all good. Like I said, I buy about like 80 crickets or so. I want to—I don't even know, like maybe twice a week or I mean twice a month or so. It will get pretty costly, by the way. I mean, if you want to go out there and try to feed it bugs and stuff, and I don't mean they're not going to eat ants. Trust me, I wouldn't—I wouldn't recommend you buy big crickets either or ants because you're likely going to have those things try to eat your gecko. And I wouldn't recommend you feed your gecko spiders either. So, unfortunately, you need to find some crickets or something smaller than it for it to eat because, like I said, I've tried to fi- I've tried to feed this one moths and it didn't want to eat them. And then I bought some of these little crickets and it actually likes them. But, anyways, this is a video I want to do to try to help people out who are thinking about having this as a pet and taking into consideration what you will need if you want to keep this type of gecko happy and healthy as well. Anyways, that is it. Thank you for watching.